Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Recently, I promised my audience that I'd invite them to write an explained video with me on stream. Ignoring the fact that having a hundred people in the writing room is a good way to derail any sense of structure, I decided that it couldn't possibly be worse than trying to write an explained video for an archetype with over a hundred cards in it. And after this, I'll leave it up to you to find out if I was right. After hours of rigorous debate and intense discourse, thankfully there were minimal casualties, we ended up with the subject of today's video, Invoked. Released in February 2017, Fusion Enforcers was a predecessor to the modern deck build pack, introducing new themes as well as updates to beloved anime archetypes like Raid Raptors and Destiny Heroes. In this one, Preda Plants and Fright Furs got a fresh coat of paint, but little did they know they were accompanying a theme that would shake the meta for years to come. Ever since Shadal's, Fusion Effects have had to push the envelope further and further to keep competitive with their extra deck contemporaries, and Invocation is the natural extension of that philosophy. Philosophy. By leveraging the grave as a resource, ensuring that your fusion effects were always in reach, and having a suite of incredible boss monsters to choose from, Invoked made its mark on the format immediately due to their cheap summoning costs, broad material components, and variety of answers to a number of problems. It's so prevalent that despite not having any presence in the modern metagame, people still talk about this stand-in for a British occultist from the early 1900s with a mix of fright and delight. So today, we're gonna crack open the Book of the Law to research our creatures from beyond on the veil. Determine what to do when our rituals go up a little haywire and summon a supporting cast of tech picks. It's time to inquire about Invoked. But before we continue, I wanted to let you all know I'll be lending my voice to the Dragon Rider Championship Series 5 tournament on January 8th and 9th. I'll be providing color commentary alongside the host, YCS Extraordinaire and Grand Maju Master, Yishan McNabb, along with other guests over the course of the event. For more details, check out Dragon Rider Games' links in the description, because if you join in, there's the chance I'll pog out over your gameplay live. And while you're supporting Dragon Rider games, you can also support me by clicking the like and subscribe buttons and joining my Discord where we've got dad jokes galore! Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Invoked? Well, you're not going to find many parallels between their levels, types, or attributes. Rather, they're a series of fusion monsters that all require Alistair the Invoker as fusion material. This magnificent mage hasn't just made a splash at your local tournament, but has also found themselves embroiled in two other storylines. One as the precocious pioneer of the evocational arts, Crowley, and another as the power battery for La Maison, the grand spellbook tower in the prophecy storyline. Two events that I'm sure will lead to some very happy and wholesome ends. Endings. In fact, let's meet the subject of these tales, Alistair the Invoker. They're a level 4 dark spellcaster monster with 1000 attack and 1800 defense. If normal summoned or flipped face up, you can add the normal spell Invocation from your deck to your hand. You can also send them from your hand to the grave as a quick effect to target a fusion monster you control, granting it a 1000 attack and defense point boost until the end of the turn. Invocation is how we're going to summon our fusion monsters 99% of the time, so normal summoning Alistair effect is going to be very important in resolving our game plan. And if you somehow find yourself the owner of a second normal summon, you'll note that there's not a single once per turn clause on this monster. This also applies to its stat boosting effect, which might seem like a waste since it's not getting you to your fusion spell, but sometimes you need a big punch. So this handsome Hierophant creates immediate toolbox options all by themselves. And to top it all off, they're a complete fashion statement. Look at that robe, that staff, that perfectly coiffed hair, that sophisticated monocle that screams I'm not afraid to breach the outer limits of the known universe and look good while doing it. But you can't have an invoked deck without Alistair's signature technique, Invocation. It's a normal spell that lets you fusion summon any fusion monster by using materials in your hand. This may seem incredibly restrictive, but if you're fusion summoning an invoked monster, you can also banish monsters from your field and or either player's grave. And if that wasn't enough, while Invocation is in your grave, you can target a banished Alistair the Invoker, likely there because they were banished as fusion material, to shuffle Invocation into your deck, and if you do, add that Alistair to your hand. At which point, you can normal summon Alistair, which searches Invocation, and now you can see how simple it is to keep that cycle going. Unless your opponent finds a way to break this cycle, you'll be able to access your fusion spell and make a powerful monster using little to no resources turn after turn, all while stripping your opponent's grave of monsters that they might have wanted to use later on. And while you can only recycle Invocation once per turn, you can activate as many as you want from your hand in a turn. So drawing multiples isn't always that bad, meaning you can invoke a ton of fusions while invoking a ton of rage in your opponent. 
event. You could say they're going to experience a Magical Meltdown, which just so happens to be our field spell. When activated, you can add an Alistair the Invoker from your deck to your hand. Also, while it's on the field, the activation of your cards and effects that include Fusion Summoning can't be negated, and your opponent's cards and effects can't be activated when a monster is Fusion Summoned this way. Generally, this is going to be copies 4, 5, and 6 of Alistair, but it can be incredibly helpful in pushing through your Fusion effects in general. Ghost Spell becomes useless, Herald of Perfection is little more than a light fixture, and Solemn Johnson is just gonna have to take the day off. However, don't rest on your laurels thinking this is just a catch-all protection effect, because the wording here does leave some wiggle room for your opponent. For instance, Summon Limit can be chained to the fusion effect because it doesn't technically negate the activation, but can cause the effect to fizzle if the conditions are met. And because it only keeps your opponent from negating the activation, your opponent can still chain an Ash Blossom to cards like Shadal Fusion, which send material from deck to grave, because Ash Blossom negates the effect, not the activation. But I don't bring up the holes in this protection to poke holes in its effectiveness. These otherworldly contracts have some very specific language in them, and I wouldn't want you to get caught up in the fine print. These three cards form what I would call the essential core of any main deck invoked engine. Now let's go over the fusions you'll be calling forth. And what better place to start than a PSA on proper invocation protocol, Invoked Kaliga. They're a level 4 Dark Beast monster that also has 1000 attack and 1800 defense. Wonder where they got that stat spread which requires Alistair and a Dark Monster as fusion material. While on the field, each player can only attack with a single monster during each battle phase, and if a player's monster effect attempts to activate, none of that player's other monsters can activate their effects for the rest of the turn, while Kaliga is face-up on the field. This monster has a lot of parallels with El Shadal Winda, acting as a monster floodgate. And while it lacks the Shadow-Cursed Spellcaster's effect destruction immunity, blocking attacks and monster effects is like 90% of what duelists do. So if you can bolster them with some kind of protection effect, this can clog up any deck that isn't Altergeist for a long, long while. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go find the part of the handbook that details the separating mages from extra-dimensional beings protocols before the judges find out. I'm not entirely sure the melding of flesh and spirit like this is tournament legal. Invoked Ragin is a level 5 Wind Warrior fusion monster with 2200 attack and 2400 defense, requiring Alistair and a Wind monster as fusion material. As a quick effect, you can target a face-up monster on the field and change it to face-down defense position. Of all the invoked monsters, this is the one with the most utility. It's effectively a repeatable Book of Moon on legs that anyone can access with a thousand life points and a cup of hot noodles. You can even bypass the self-destruction effect of instant fusion by having Ragin target itself to shrug off that condition. But when fusion summoned properly, you can start flipping monsters down right from the get-go. Wind is a pretty tough attribute to get a hold of, but thanks to hand traps like Droll and Lockbird, as well as a surprising amount of synergy with Wind Witches, there's always a chance this Ruler of Thunder can hit the board for some MORTAL COMBAT! Bip, 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 bip. Invoked Cositas is a level 6 water dragon fusion monster with 1800 attack and 2900 defense, requiring Alistair and a water monster as fusion material. They can't be destroyed or targeted by your opponent's effects, and can attack while in face-up defense position, applying its attack for damage calculation, which puts them in the same defense attacker category as Total Defense Shogun and Rampart Blaster, as opposed to Super Heavy Samurai's and Ice Jade Ship Kingfisher's effect, which actually applies the superior defense stat. Despite the odd choice not to go down that route, Cosita still makes for a strong stall option in Paper Yu-Gi-Oh! and an absolute format warping Leviathan in Duel Links. With the help of the equip spell Power of the Guardians, this Water Dragon was a nigh unstoppable juggernaut, so much so that you can't even play it on the platform anymore because it's banned. Just another example of how A, cards that might not have much impact on Paper Yu-Gi-Oh! can have new life breathed into them with a new format like Duel Links, and B, your money is being sunk into a digital platform that offers you no physical value in return, thus any card can be ripped away from you at a moment's notice when a bean counter decides it'd be more profitable to do so, and once the sun unleashes its full magnetic force upon this insignificant orb of dust floating through the void of space, all that data will be lost, gone forever like so much spam email. Boy, I sure do love these digital trading card game clients. Invoked Purgatrio is a level 7 Fire Fiend fusion monster with 2300 attack and 2000 defense, requiring Alistair and a Fire Monster as fusion material. They gain 200 attack for each card your opponent controls, can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each, and deals piercing battle damage. So yeah. 
2300 might sound a bit low for a multi-attacker, but Purgatrio doesn't care what kind of cards your opponent controls, this isn't Flare Scarab. A monster here, a couple of back row there, maybe even the odd field spell, and Purgatrio can easily get into the 3000s. And that's not including just how devastating the Alistair boost is with them, because remember, multi-attack. It's not out of the question that an Alistair boosted Purgatrio can absolutely wreck an opponent who's chosen to go wide with monsters, giving them a severe case of burnout. Invoked Magalonica is a level 8 Earth Rock fusion monster with 3000 attack and 3300 defense, requiring Alistair and an Earth monster as a material. And. uh. That's it! It's a non-effect monster, so it's really here to banish Earths out of our opponent's grave and punch real good. Also, a Tenyi synergy! Cause it's... a non... effect... monster. Um... Okay, not really getting anywhere with this. Let me check the meme folder for a way out of this segment. Aha! Uh Those big stats really make this monster a big shot! Ooh, made it. Alright. Time for what is arguably the most fearsome of the fusions, Invoked Mechaba, a level 9 light machine monster with 2500 attack and 2100 defense, requiring Alistair and a light monster as fusion material. Once per turn, when a spell card, trap card, or monster effect is activated as a quick effect, you can send the same type of card, monster, spell, or trap from your hand to the grave to negate that activation, and if you do, banish that card. So not only was this doing a great Dragoon impression back in the day, it didn't even have the respect to let those cards hit the grave. Any negated card that might have some kind of follow-up effect if destroyed or sent to the grave in general was thrown into the void, never to be seen again. Combine that with a solid stat line and an attribute requirement in line with one of the best ones in the game, and you can say Mecha Buy to anything that gets thrown its way. But while Mechaba is the most fearsome, that's not to say it's the biggest. That honor goes to Invoked Elysium, a level 10 fairy fusion monster with 3200 attack and 4000 defense, requiring an invoked monster, so any of our previously covered fusions, and a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck. A rather strange fusion requirement that acts as a bit of a limiter, so we have to use something from our field. They must first be fusion summoned with the above fusion material, and while its printed attribute is light, while on the field they're also treated as dark, Earth, Water, Fire, and Wind. And once per turn, as a quick effect, you can target an invoked monster you control or is in your grave, to banish it and all monsters your opponent controls with the same attribute as that monster. Elysium is a prime example of a monster that's absolutely, incomprehensibly powerful, almost as incomprehensible as its art, essentially being a non-targeting, banishing board wipe for your opponent that's brought in line by some truly unfortunate summoning conditions. If Invoked were built like a theme that were meant to be its own standalone deck, I have no doubt you'd be able to fill the grave with some spare Invoke to feed to this, but since it usually sees play as a supplemental engine, there's not really an inclination to feed these powerful utility monsters to the grinder like this, to say nothing of available extra deck space. Sorry Elysium, you and Doriato did your best to try and make an attribute soup format viable, but that style of play is dead like Disco. However, despite my previous musings about how Invoked can't be played pure, that didn't stop the developers from making some cards that would try to help with this. The first being the Book of the Law. It's a quick play spell that has you tributing an Invoked monster's cost to special summon an Invoked monster from your extra deck with a different original attribute from that monster, and this is treated as a fusion summon. As far as support cards for fusion themes go, the Book of the Law is pretty stellar. It helps get you into Invoke that you might want, but neither player is supplying the correct material monsters to make it happen. And while you can only activate one per turn, that doesn't mean it can't be extremely deadly. If cards like El Shadal Fusion and Mask Change have taught us anything, it's that if you don't make it so you have to summon the monster in defense position, you can rack up big damage in no time. For instance, if you clear a board with Purgatrio, but your opponent still has a few life points left, you can swap them into Magalonica to secure the win. Now, one might think they can use Book of the Law to make Elysium, bypassing its horrendous summoning requirements, especially because this counts as a fusion summon. But it says it has to first be fusion summoned using the above material, so the giant orb in the sky is still out of our reach. But still, whether you're looking to access the right effect at the right time, or to smack your opponent with an island-sized fusion monster, this quick play spell is a great way to throw the book at your opponent. 
Omega Summon is a normal trap that has you targeting any number of banished invoked monsters with different names and special summoning them in defense position. If Book of the Law is here to help smooth out our fusion summons in case the necessary material isn't available, or to gain access to certain monsters when splashing them in, Omega Summon is the payoff for when we throw synergy to the wind and want to play with nothing but a good good level 4 dark spellcaster that searches invocation. If you use two invoked for the summon of Elysium, this brings them back like they never left. It also works if you need to bring back any that you banished as fuel for the summon of another invoked, which will become very relevant in just a bit. This card is aptly named because if you can activate it profitably, then this Omega summon will mark the end for your opponent. That's all the cards we got out of Alistair's initial release, but that wouldn't be the end of this Fusion Fanatics fantasies, as we'd get two more pieces of distinct support that would make their extra deck toolbox even more frightening. And in the spirit of having an engine that's incredibly splashable, we now have a Link Monster! Alistair, the Invoker of Madness, the mage that has demonic entities emerging from their corporeal form and looks good doing it. They're a Link 2 Dark Spellcaster monster with 1800 attack, requiring two monsters with different types and attributes as material. Their name becomes Alistair the Invoker while on the field and in the grave, and if a monster is fusion summoned while you control Madness Alistair, except during the damage step, you can discard a card, and if you do, add an Invocation or the Book of the Law from your deck to your hand. And if this face-up card you control leaves the field, because of an opponent's card effect, you can add an Omega Summon from your deck to your hand. The Link material is very indicative of their splash ability, since any non-dark and non-spellcaster monster can easily make this maddening menace. And as long as you have cards in your hand, you can keep searching Invocation, because none of their effects are once per turn. And if you manage to string together a bunch of summons and banish all those invoked fusions, then that Omega Summon is gonna be pretty big! They're gonna be generating so much value for you, your opponent's gonna find it maddening. We've also got a new fusion to add to the mix, Invoked Ao Gettys, a level 8 light fairy fusion monster with 2000 attack and 2800 defense, requiring Alistair and any fusion monster as material. Kind of a flavor fail since you can't also use the Grand Spellbook Tower as material since Alistair is, you know, wearing it. You already made a monster that's the fusion of two field spells, don't tell me it can't be done! If fusion summoned, or when any number of monsters are special summoned to your opponent's field, you can target a monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Also, once per turn, you can banish a fusion monster from your grave, and Al Geddes gains attack equal to that banished monster's attack until the end of your opponent's turn. This means, despite having a below average attack stat for their weight class, you can still make them an absolute juggernaut, so long as you can feed it a consistent stream of fusions. They're also removal in the best way, not only getting rid of a monster when it hits the field, but also anytime your opponent would special summon. It doesn't even have to be what was summoned, so you're also able to hit established threats if you want. And with all the banishing of fusion monsters, once again, we're gonna be able to pull off an Omega summon of towering proportions. So that's all the invoked cards, but what do we do with them? Well, as a supplemental strategy, they've already seen great success as a way to add important toolbox effects to themes that lack interruption or attack power. But we're not trying to figure out how Invoked can help other decks, we're looking to see how far we can push Invoked proper. We could play a ton of hand traps, as is the norm, to both stun our opponent and give us fusion material, but I want to see if we can do some more research to add some depth to this sublime strategy. So what can we play to help them out? A theme that slots in very well with Invoked is, surprise surprise, Magistus. While you're not going to be using the other spellcasters to Link Summon for Madness Alistair, they offer a wide variety of attributes to play around with, and that's without even bringing up our younger magical scientist, Crowley the Magistus of Grimoires. You can normal summon Alistair, get the invocation, then send them to the grave for Crowley. At that point, you can have them change their attribute to whatever you want, and now you have access to any invoked monster to fit that particular situation. This also gives you access to powerful cards like Zoroa and Reliona, opening up the rest of the strategy to gain the help of other powerful extra deck monsters like Iwas, Artemis, and Calamity Zoroa. There's also a number of Spellbook cards we can make use of. While it's largely an archetype concerned with its own cards, Spellbook of Knowledge is an excellent way to gain some card advantage. Just like how you can send Alistair to the grave to get the attribute Agnostic Crowley onto the board, you can just as easily send them to the grave with knowledge for a bit of card advantage. And since Invocation uses material in the grave, it'd be a waste not to. This means you can also run Spellbook Magician of Prophecy for a similar effect, helping you to draw into your effectively 10 copies of Invocation, while setting up material for Cosine and they can be searched with Spellbook of Secrets. Or, if you don't want to worry about bricking on an Alistair Blue Boy hand, you can also just run Wonder Wand for a similar effect. 
As with any fusion deck that has a broad range of what can be used as material, super polymerization can be pretty clutch. Now, obviously this means you'll have to keep Alistair on board, which can really telegraph it, but you can alternatively go into your invoked monsters as normal, then the second your opponent summons from the extra deck, you can flip over super poly and fold your invoked and their monster into Elysium. Now you've gotten their monster off the board, and you can threaten a whole board wipe during their end phase. If Duel Links has taught us anything, it's that element sabers are an invoked player's best friend. Like Crowley, they can change their attribute, but these warriors can do so from the grave. In this instance, you can use Invocation to send the Element Sabers from your hand to the grave, then any follow-up Invocations will have the right attribute you need for the Invoked you want. And you can't talk about Invoked without their best partner, Mech Knights. Setting Invocation and linking Alistair into one of many available Link 1 monsters are great ways to set up your columns for their summons. Not only do they provide a wealth of attack points to close out games, it's just nice to have a steady stream of light monsters to make Mechabuzz with, and are the perfect type and attribute to make Madness Alistair. As for a silly tech pick, well, we've got a very control-oriented card in Mechaba, so why don't we turn up the heat with Mask Change 2? By sending Alistair to the grave, we can get Dark Law, which shuts off any hand trap that needs to go to the grave to activate, as well as stopping any graveyard strategy from flourishing. Even the discard isn't that bad, since if it's a monster, it becomes prime invocation material. And to top it all off, if you're sitting on a Kaliga, you could also mask change it during your opponent's end phase, or even during your battle phase if you don't need the monster effects, to open up one floodgate and hit your opponent with another. And that's all I've got to say about Invoked. It's been competitively relevant for as long as it's been in circulation, and for good reason. For minimal investment, you can get some of the most powerful fusion monsters ever printed, while also picking cards out of your opponent's grave to deny them their effects. They've also seen play in everything from tournament topping decks to rogue strategies that just need a little extra boost in playability. Their persistence in the metagame has perturbed a number of people in the community, but no matter what they have to say, you get to play with the hottest anime man in the whole game. And honestly, what more could you ever want? But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you agree that Normal Summon Alistair effect is the way to play, or do we need to put a stop to this magical miscreant? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video around. It really does a lot to help me out. And if you want to help fund my quest to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, I'd be so grateful if you could check out my YouTube membership and Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. In fact, I'd like to take this time to thank my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious quiz. Quasar Commander, Cozy Boat 275, Nebula Navigators, Benjamin Meisner, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Gloomba 331, Jared C., Maven, Panther J., Shooting Star 3300, The Wizard Moose and the Fresh Prince of Conair, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. And if you want to see a video covering Alistair's auspicious origins, check out this video I did covering Magistus. And if you want to see two yu tubers going at it, check out this playlist of my new series with Noah Jenk, Progression Polls. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye